In this video, we're going to look at some other examples of MCA large artery occlusions. So yet again, we have our source images and then our axial thick MIPS. This is slightly off the axial plane in this particular example and then a nice uh, coronal thick MIP reconstruction. So scrolling on our source images, we see the normal left MCA here and a nice MCA bifurcation. And then uh, looking at the opposite side on the right side, looking for the same vessel, we see that there's a hard stop here, a large artery occlusion in the right MCA stem in this patient presenting with left hemiparesis, neglect, and gaze deviation to the right. So we see this uh, even better yet again with the thick MIP reconstructions. We see the uh, carotid terminus here on the right side on the left. The left MCA is wide open to a nice well visualized bifurcation and then we have the same configuration here the ACA at the top of the carotid on the right the M1 stem and then a focal occlusion here hard cut off uh, with lack of contrast filling beyond that uh, and then some degree of uh, reconstitution by collaterals uh, a fair distance from the occlusion and that's uh, just as well if not better seen here on the coronal uh, thick MIP reconstructions, top of the carotid normal left MCA, top of the carotid right side, and the hard cutoff. And here's another example of an MCA occlusion, in this case a left MCA occlusion. Again, source images and the two planes uh, thick MIP reconstruction. And so on the source images, this patient right away you get a little bit of uh, distraction away from your area of interest because this patient has a remote history of a cerebral aneurysm that was clipped so we have some scattering uh, beam hardening artifact here on the right side but if we focus on the area of interest on the left side in this patient with right hemiparesis and aphasia uh, we see that the carotid terminus here the it comes up the, there's an ACA uh, on the left side uh, and just after the uh, MCA uh, emerges from the top of the carotid, a little bit farther than in our prior example on the left side, we see our large artery occlusion here, a hard stop. We don't see any vessels branching off from this point uh, on the source images. And the same thing or a similar thing is shown uh, on the thick MIP axials, so A1, M1, and cutoff. Again, we see some distal reconstitution in the sylvian fissure. And the same thing on the coronals, the carotid terminus, zooming in on this, A1, M1, and cutoff. Make sure to scroll fully through the stack to make sure that there's no uh, branch coming off at a sharp angle that you're missing. And in fact, there is none. It's just a hard cutoff from the clot causing this patient's stroke. In this example, we're going to look at a more distal MCA occlusion. This is one of the more challenging uh, things to look at on a CTA in an acute ischemic stroke, as the farther the clot is from the circular willis, the harder it is to pick up on the cutoff because the vessels are smaller, there are more branches. Uh, luckily, in terms of practical considerations for endovascular stroke treatment, really the more proximal branches just beyond the MCA bifurcation or trifurcation are, there, are the only ones uh, that we're really concerned about in terms of distal MCA occlusion. If it's much farther out, uh, deep into the sylvian fissure or one of the more distal branches beyond that, uh, it, it's likely to be beyond uh, the reach of the interventionalist. So this is about as far out as you need to be able to pick up the occlusion. So here we have our source images, we have our axial MIP and our coronal MIP. If we look on the axial MIP here, uh, we see this patient who has a right uh, hemiparesis, aphasia, and left gaze deviation. In fact, you can see on the source images here the left gaze deviation uh, looking at the orbits. Uh, this uh, patient has a normal uh, appearing M1 stem, and then farther in the MCA we have a few more branches, the main bifurcation here, and then we see this cutoff on the axial thick MIPS. Again, we want to look through the whole stack and make sure that we don't see any signs of branch coming out. So again, it's a blind end uh, where there should be branches or there should be filling of a uh, stem and we don't see uh, any contrast beyond that here. So that is a large artery occlusion uh, in the proximal aspect of the sylvian fissure. Uh, and same sort of thing here is viewed 
in the coronal reconstruction. We see our uh, branch here, and we see in this view, again, that same hard cutoff. And we have to, as we scroll through, differentiate the vessel of interest from the surrounding vessels. You can window things, you can move it around, make sure that you're really confident that you see that hard cutoff and no vessels coming out uh, at, at acute angles. And then lastly, the same thing, we want to corroborate what we see on the source images. And we do in fact see that same appearance of a hard cutoff right here.